Now then we can move into the results. And for the results, we can, of course, describe, first of all, who the participants were. So how many people answered our survey? Uh, what were the subjects of this uh, experiment? The number who participated, and you may include those who did not finish the experiment. So the incomplete numbers, which in social science can be quite large, but in applied science areas actually is often quite small. The total number of participants, so we really need to get an idea of the sample frame. That is, where did you do this, how did you do it, and who did you do it with or to. If you had multiple sample uh, groups, if you had multiple um, conditions, you need to explain those carefully. Control group, non-control group, control group number two, number one, etc., and exactly what do they mean. Then you need to summarize the data, the numbers that came out, and the analysis. So even if you're doing a paper like a meta-analysis or a literature analysis, you still have data that gets summarized. That's, in a way, the whole point of our research is to take big ideas and make them small. So here you need to make it small. Tell me exactly what happened in the data. Include all the relevant results, including things like the exact value for F-test or T-test, for example, degrees of freedom, probability levels, direction of the effect. Remember, sometimes when you do your T-test, it comes out negative or positive. You need to explain what does that mean. That's very important. Do not include individual scores or raw data. So don't include everything. You need to include the stuff that's the result of the analysis. So when you do uh, an SPSS, a program and you've put in all your numbers and this, these big tables come out with all of this stuff, you need to really find out where the summaries are, not include all of that and certainly not include the raw data, which is one mistake novice researchers often make in social science and that is they take the raw data, combine it up into basically an average and then they make these big tables and try to come to some kind of conclusions on these. And this is a little bit overload because this is pre-analysis. The point of analysis is to bring those big amounts of data down to a very small level so we know exactly what they mean, what's the result, which thus the section is called the results section, right? Assume that your reader has professional knowledge, and that is you don't need to explain every detail. If you're going to for example, give the result in an ANOVA table. You don't need to explain what an ANOVA table is or what, how an ANOVA works. You don't need to give the formula. Just assume that they know. And of course, for every professional area, people may know different things. Don't go over basic concepts and procedures. So usually in the results, you do not need to explain the methodology. You did that in the methodology. You don't need to go over it all over again. So try to get right to the point of the results. Tables and figures in your results section should include information that adds information to your writing, does not repeat it. So if you put a table or if you put a figure in, you need to really be sure that this table or this figure adds information. It doesn't just repeat something. So if you can say, Variable A is 10% bigger than variable B. You don't need a table for that. You don't need a chart. You can already say that in your writing very clearly. But if you have something that's more complicated, like a four-way relationship and an interaction effect, you may need to have a table or a figure to help make that very clear. Only use it only use when words in the, whoops, I skipped that piece. Well, it says only use when words in the body are not sufficient, not enough to really make things clear. Let's do a practice now for the discussion section. What I'd like you to do is use your QRP online writing software and write 100 words focused on the discussion. Remember, if you have a research topic for your actual research, that's great, you can use that. If you don't have a research topic because you're just practicing writing, then go ahead and see if you can find a topic in Google Scholar. Something you're interested in would be great. After you get a good topic, go ahead and think about it and then think what the discussion could be. Now, of course, 
if you don't really have research, how can you have a discussion? Well, try your best to make it up or to follow something you can find on Google Scholar and try to rewrite it to be a little bit different to what you imagine it would be. The goal here is to practice your writing, not to do actual research. That's up to you, of course, in what you're doing. Remember, use your QRP software, and there's online help with your QRP software, that y little yellow box that's right next to where you're writing. You can also use the QRP ebook to get example sentences. It's always a great idea to use example sentences and change it to match exactly what you're doing.